If we were to compare the Earth to an ordinary chicken egg, then its crust is 20 times thinner than the shell relative to its diameter. There are so many things to learn about the wonderful planet that we call home, but the things going on inside of the Earth are some of the most mysterious and hard to figure out. By looking inside of the Earth, we can learn so much more about the history of the Earth and how our planet formed, but we can't actually go down there, so these discoveries always come as a crazy surprise. From mountains to oceans to primitive forms of life, it turns out there's a lot going on inside of the Earth, so let's not waste any time and start talking about it. Welcome back Top 10 Fam, I am your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and we are diving into the top 10 unsettling discoveries found inside the Earth's crust. Let's get into it. In our number 10 spot, we have Brendan Fraser and Josh Hutcherson on their journey to the center of the Earth. Just kidding! In our number 10 spot, we have the Atlantis Massif Drill. On a journey to the center of the Earth through the seafloor, you would first go through the sediment and then a layer of basalt, and then you would hit the gabbroic layer, which is the layer directly above the mantle. We have gone through to this layer before, but because of the fact that the basalt is hard to get through, it's not done often. In 2010, a team of scientists led by Stephen Giovanni of Oregon State University drilled down into the Atlantis Massif. This spot was chosen specifically because of the fact that the tectonic activity below this submerged mountain caused the gabbroic layer to be pushed up within 70 meters of the sea floor, which made this spot the easiest to reach. So on this mission, the team was able to drill 1,391 meters down where the temperatures reach 102 degrees Celsius, and here they found life. They found communities of bacteria that were quite a surprise. Stephen had previously found life in the form of microorganisms at the basalt layer during previous research missions, and it was expected that a similar type of life would be found here, but it was actually very different. At the moment, it is believed that this bacteria may have found its way down there from more shallow regions rather than having evolved inside of the crust. In our number 9 spot today, we have a mountain range. What if I told you that you currently might be unknowingly standing on top of a mountain? An inside earth mountain, of course, which I'm sure is the sciencey term for it. Subterranean mountains exist beneath our feet as a part of the layered structure that exists inside of our beautiful earth. Scientists were able to get a better look at these mountains using the seismic waves from multiple big earthquakes, and based on the most recent evidence, they know that not only are some of these mountains taller than Mount Everest, but they are also extremely rugged mountains. I know these mountains don't sit in the crust and instead exist in a transition zone between the upper and lower mantle, but we had to talk about them today still. Discoveries like this are super important because they can give scientists insight onto how the planet formed and how it functions. It might also give us some clues as to why the Earth is a bit of a chemical oddball in terms of planets. In our number 8 spot today, we have blobs. About 1,000 kilometers into the Earth, the layers there are being torn apart by the rising plumes of hot rock. You know, regular inside the earth stuff, but under these plumes there are two strange blobs, about the size of Australia. Again, I know this one's a little too deep to be in the crust of the earth, but mysterious blobs inside the earth need to be talked about. We can't just ignore something like that. These blobs sit at the bottom of the rocky mantle just outside of the molten outer core. They are made of rock like the rest of the mantle is, but they are much more hot and much more dense, and if we can figure out more about them, they could hold some pretty important answers about the history of our planet. The blobs were first spotted in the 1970s, and since then they truly have been baffled to scientists. One of the blobs is underneath Africa and the other is under the Pacific Ocean. Right now, the main debate over these blobs is what exactly they are made of, but that is difficult to answer since we can't ever go there to find out. Maybe one day we'll be able to. In our number 7 spot today, we have the fifth layer. We are traditionally taught that the Earth has four main layers. The crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. I mean, at least this is what I was taught, but there is a team from the Australian National University who, last year, confirmed the existence of what is being called Earth's innermost inner core. The idea of this layer had been around for a while, but the data to prove it was previously lacking. Through observing the data of how seismic waves travel through the Earth, they were able to detect this new innermost core, and although it is quite difficult to observe, this discovery may give insight into a previously unknown dramatic event 
event that took place in the history of Earth's existence. Geophysicist and study lead Joanne Stevenson said, We found evidence that may indicate a change in the structure of iron, which suggests perhaps two separate cooling events in Earth's history. The details of this big event are still a bit of a mystery, but we've added another piece of the puzzle when it comes to our knowledge of the Earth's inner core. In our number six spot today, we have an ancient seabed. A seabed that once was located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean was found buried hundreds of miles beneath China. This slab of rock once found its home at the top of the lithosphere, which is the outermost layer of the surface of the Earth. How did it get hundreds of miles below China? Well, it got pushed down by a neighboring tectonic plate in what is called a subduction event. This discovery was so notable because scientists had never detected a subduction event so deep within the surface of the planet. When they found this rock slab, it was still continuing its descent towards the mantle of the Earth. I wonder if one day it will ever come back to the surface again. In our number five spot today, we have old crust. Speaking of what I just said, we've got to talk about the vanishing crust of the Earth. I mean, we just talked about finding old outer layers of the Earth descending down into the planet, but what happens to this crust? Researchers have now provided evidence that shows that while Earth's crust is mostly made up of new materials, there is a percentage of it that is ancient chunks that once sunk down to the mantle, only to later resurface. This led them to also discover that based on the amount of the crust that was recycled, the planet would have had to have been creating crust since its formation 4.5 billion years ago, which contradicted the previous theories. Like. I wonder if the crust we're standing on right now is the same crust that the dinosaurs stood on. Maybe that's scientifically inaccurate, but it's kind of a cool thought. In our number four spot today, we have ultra low velocity zones. These guys are called ULVZs for short. Yes, I'm Canadian. And these are patches on the core mantle boundary that have extremely low seismic velocities. So remember when we were talking about the blobs and how they use seismic activity to find them? Well, the zones where the blobs are are slow velocity zones. So what could be in the areas where there's ultra low velocity? These zones are mapped as being hundreds of kilometers in diameter and tens of kilometers thick, and their shear wave velocities can be up to 30% lower than the areas surrounding them. It is currently hypothesized that these zones are either enriched in iron, partially molten, or a combination of the two. Or perhaps they are a result of the presence of carbon. Again, it's one of those things that is super hard to observe when you can't actually go down and check it out. In our number three spot today, we have the Earth's core. Okay, we are talking about the core again. I know, not the crust, but the discovery of the age of the core of the Earth is something we have to talk about. The solid inner core of the Earth is a 2,442 kilometer ball of iron that has now been estimated to have formed 1 billion to 1.3 billion years ago. Scientists were able to recreate the conditions found in the core on a teeny tiny scale, and this allowed them to be able to calculate how long it would take for a blob of molten iron to build up to the core's current size. The window of time that they found lined up nicely with the known changes and fluctuations in the magnetic field of the Earth, which increased greatly in strength about 1 billion to 1.5 billion years ago. It is possible that the crystallization of the inner core may have been responsible for the strengthening of the magnetism because the process would have released heat into the outer core, and this heat would drive the churning motion of the liquid, which would then power the magnetic field. This discovery came just last year in 2020, and it absolutely rocked the scientific community. I just love science. In our number two spot today, we have an ocean. Researchers from Northwestern University and the University of Mexico report that there is evidence that there may be oceans worth of water deep below the United States. Well, not exactly liquid water as we know it up here, but the water is located within the rock deep inside the mantle of the Earth, and this just may be the Earth's largest water reservoir. Part of what makes our planet so livable is the liquid water on our surface, and for a long time, researchers have been trying to figure out just how much water water exists on our Earth, and that includes both the oceans we see and the reservoirs we can't. These researchers found deep pockets of magma about 400 miles beneath North America, and this is thought to likely be a signature of the presence of water. This discovery would suggest that water from the surface can be brought down deep into the Earth by tectonic plates, where it will then eventually cause the partial melting of rocks within the mantle. This discovery is extremely helpful in finding answers to the question of the vast amount 
amounts of water on our planet and where the missing deep water has been. For a long time, scientists have speculated that there is water trapped in the rocky mantle, but this is the first time someone has been able to show some direct evidence of that. In our number one spot today, we have structures. It has become abundantly clear to me that seismic waves are an extremely important part of the discoveries from within the Earth. Using a machine algorithm that was actually intended to analyze distant galaxies, researchers were able to instead learn something about what was going on inside of our own planet. Using this technique, they found two separate unidentified structures deep within our Earth. One is located under the Marquesas Islands and had never been previously detected, while the other is located beneath Hawaii and it was found to have been much larger than what was previously thought. The first one I mentioned was found because it was in a mega ULVZ zone and it is believed that both of these structures are made up of some sort of exotic materials that date all the way back to a time before the Earth even had a moon. That's crazy. An Earth with no moon on it is not an Earth I want to live on. It is thought that these structures might be partially melted material that comes from at least 4 billion years ago. This showed that it is possible mega ULVZs might hold most primitive geochemical signatures that have been relatively untouched since formation. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video today, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky. Think about what's underneath your feet. Sorry about the swear there, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.